I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I've been testing Fat Shark modules. Did you notice that? Please don't tune out. I have something interesting, new, and exciting. I promise you. This is not just the same old, same old. I have been testing Fat Shark modules, and I've been testing them all alone in a vacuum. But what about their ability to handle interference prone environments like an actual race? Well, I did that test, and I got a very interesting result. Stay tuned. I am honestly a little hesitant to release this video. I'm kind of gun shy. Uh, some time ago, I released a video where I showed the LaForge performing dramatically worse than the True D in a specific set of tests. And uh, of course, <laughs> you bad jumped all over it, picked it apart, pointed out some valid, completely valid flaws in my test methodology. And, uh, and I took the video down and reran the tests. And uh, th there was more criticism <laughs> those tests. And I've been improving my test methodology again and again. And every time the results have gotten closer and closer to that Trudy and LaForge basically perform the same. And so when I ran the test that I'm going to show you today, and I found a dramatic, I think it's pretty dramatic difference between the two modules. I, I got PTSD flashbacks to when I released that earlier video. But I feel like I have tested these. Uh, these results are as rigorous as I can make them. And I've also run these results by UBAD and Furious to uh, try and head off any criticism. And uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna, not going to try and blow it out of proportion, but I think I've got something pretty interesting to show you today. You see, all the testing I've done until now has been with a single transmitter and a single receiver, uh, testing sort of the raw RF performance of the modules. But I've heard stories from people who say something like, I was at a race and there was eight pilots in the air and people using a certain module were getting all kinds of ghosting and interference and people using some other module were just fine. And that suggests that maybe there's a difference in the ability of these modules to reject adjacent channel interference. Now I have a video about adjacent channel interference. Basically it's what happens when somebody powers up and they're not on your channel, but they're so close to you that they blast you out of the air anyway. You've probably experienced this. A good module with a good RF front end and filtering and whatever, it's a good one, will do a better job of saying, no, get out of here, you, you don't belong here, you're not on my channel, and a bad one will do a worse job. Let me show you the test that I came up with to try and test how these modules handle that scenario. Here's a satellite view of my lovely house that I'll use to demonstrate my test procedure. I took the goggles with the modules. Actually, the modules were not in physical goggles. They were in my test rig where they, all the modules just get plugged into a socket. But the modules with the antennas were down here by the street. And I laid out a surveyor's tape and I put a copter transmitting on the same channel 200 feet. That's this, this distance. I, I, I didn't check it to scale. I just put the dot on the map. But the distance in real life was exactly 200 feet. Then I took another copter and I powered it up on 5760. Now that's a spacing of only 20 megahertz. Uh, very, very close. And when I did this, nothing changed. Nothing changed on the 5740 link. But then what I did is I walked closer and closer and closer and you can see that the closer we get, there's 5760, eventually it'll be right on top of the receivers, it'll be screaming in their ear, and it'll overpower the 5740 signal from this weak, far away copter. And I looked to find how close I could get to the receivers before I started to get interference, and specifically, which receiver had the interference first. Let's take a look at the results. Here I am setting up the experiment. You can see that I put both of the transmitters on 25 milliwatts. Uh, here I'm setting up the 5740, but I set the 5760 the exact same way. 25 milliwatts, 5740, and you can see that both of them are using TBS Triumph antennas, and you can just barely see the X-Air 10 dBi antenna as well. Uh, I assume that we were using the 10 dBi antenna for most of the test, but I, I didn't pay too much attention to that. And now I'm setting up the 5760 copter. Uh, yeah, smart audio is a lifesaver here. You're very easy to change the transmit power and the, uh, the channel. Now I've set the 5740 copter down 200 feet away. I'm powering up the 5760 copter, and I'm gonna begin walking toward the base station 
and I will fast forward to the first point where I started to see any distortion whatsoever. So here on the left hand screen I start to see just the tiniest bit of ghosting there and then it also starts to appear on the right hand screen. Now I don't have the exact distance here. Uh, in a minute I'm going to call out 40 feet. I, I can hear it on the recording and I'll tell you when we hit that point. I'm slowly walking closer though until I got to the point where I could very clearly see like they were definitely getting some interference. Uh, right about now I'm at 40 feet and I'm standing. I'm not moving, I'm just standing in one place and holding the copter absolutely still. And we can see that the LaForge is doing better than the True D. The LaForge was the first one to actually uh, get any ghosting at all, but the True D uh, seems to be doing worse in terms of losing sync. In just a few seconds, I'm going to start walking closer and I'm going to stop at 30 feet. I'll tell you when I get to that point. And right about now, I am standing 30 at 30 feet away, standing still. Right here, I raised the copter high up in the air over my head to try and make the interference worse. And right about now, I walked to a distance of 20 feet and stood still. Right about now. 20 feet. 20 feet. Next thing I did is I swapped the antennas uh, from one receiver to the other to rule out the possibility that one of the antennas was better or worse than the others and was causing the issue. Another test that I'm not going to show you is I tested the monitors. I used a Y splitter cable to run both monitors off the same signal and determine that the monitors were performing approximately equally as well. Okay, both antennas are now swapped and are aimed the exact same direction. This time the copter is on the ground at 20 feet, 20 feet. I'm gonna go pick the copter up off the ground now. So right here is where I pick it up and there's a brief phase where both of them kind of get clobbered. Uh, maybe just the way I'm holding the copter, yeah, but um, it settles in and the, the true D still seems to be doing worse, the right-hand one. Finally, I walked back toward the other copter to find the furthest distance where I could see any distortion at all, and that's what I'm doing here. And I found that the very first point where I could see any distortion at all seemed to be about 120 feet. Beyond that point, neither of them had any distortion. And that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Uh, until now in my testing, the better the testing has got, the closer the modules have performed to each other to the point where in the last round of testing, which was the most rigorous and valid test I've done so far, there were, I and many people seem to agree, as close as makes no difference. So I am excited and wary at the same time about finding a result like this where one seems to perform 
definitely better than the other. That being said, uh, you know, UBAD always said, it goes out of their way to point out that they are not using the standard off-the-shelf RX50808 uh, RF module. All the other Fat Shark modules on the market are using a commodity RF component. It's an RX5808, and you basically stick it on a board and it handles the reception of the signals. Uh, and Fat Shark has a custom module that they've modified, they've added enhancements to. And until now, I've kind of wondered whether that makes a difference, but maybe that's the explanation as to why they seem to be doing better here. Um, I can't think of anything else. I tried, I tried swapping the antennas. I've tried swapping the modules. Uh, if I were really going to be rigorous about this, I would try multiple TrueD modules. Could it be that my TrueD module is defective in some way? I mean, it's just a, it's just a module I got in the mail, but it's a really, you know, good science requires replication of results. One, one result uh, is not definitive, uh, but we only have so much time and so many resources. And in this case, the result uh, seems, well, you can see the result for yourself. Um, I don't want to, I feel bad because I don't want to, I'm gun shy. I'm just gun shy because people, apparently people listen to what I say. How did that happen? <laughs> so if I'm going to say LaForge did better or Trudy did better, uh, if there's anything I've learned in my, as I've, as I've matured as a YouTuber, uh, it's that I need to be careful about those things. And um, all I can say is that in this test, with all the precautions I could take, LaForge performed better. LaForge fanboys are cheering. There you go. Uh, and I'd love to do more testing to try and figure out what, uh, what you know, what, whether this is a valid result or whether there's something else that caused this result. But uh, for now, it seems like if you fly in very crowded environments, LaForge should be the choice for you. Thanks for watching and happy flying.